My wife, Carol, and I have very different schedules. But there's one time of the day that we know we will be together, and that's breakfast. So we make it a point to share breakfast together every day. Monday through Saturday, however, we are not the only two people at the breakfast table. We have a third entity with us, and that entity is the Wall Street Journal. We have a home subscription to the Wall Street Journal. We have it delivered, and we put it down on the table between us. And then as we eat our breakfast and orange juice and coffee, we read news stories to each other. It's our way of starting today and the way of communicating, and it works very, very well for us. But if that's all we did, if the only thing we did was just read the Wall Street Journal, we would not be good consumers of news. Wall Street Journal has a particular point of view, probably more to Carol's liking, because in the world of politics, Carol leans to the right, let's say, and I lean to the left. So we have some space between us. And in that space, we find conversation. And we read the Wall Street Journal to do that. We actually turn to the editorial page first, because that always spurs discussion. And then we go about getting ready for our day. Carol has a typical office job. My schedule is quite varied based upon where I'm going to be teaching or lecturing on a given day. And so we head to work. And on our way to work, we listen to different news sources. But on Sunday, when we neither of us go to work on Sunday, we do something different. We come to the breakfast table, and there's no home delivery of the Wall Street Journal on Sunday. So I bring my PC, and I open up CNN.com. And Carol brings her Kindle, and she opens up Fox News. And we sit there with our screens open, and I'll say, well, I've got a news story about this. And she'll say, well, I've got one similar to that. And we read the stories to each other and compare how they were reported. Because, trust me, the stories are reported quite differently from one medium to the other. And through that, we have discussion. And through that, we have better knowledge of the way that the story perhaps actually took place. Let's go back to that morning commute, though. In the morning commute, both of us listened to NPR's Morning Edition, which, by the way, is the most listened to radio program in the United States. It leans a bit to the left, but they have really good interviews. They bring in really good guests, and it's interesting. Carol particularly likes StoryCorps, which is on Friday morning. So we get a good dose of news doing that. And then Carol goes into her office job, and often I will lecture or teach in the morning and then drive somewhere in the afternoon. And when I drive somewhere in the afternoon, I listen to Worldview on WBEZ in Chicago, which is an NPR station. Now, Worldview is hosted by Jerome McDonald, who has been doing this job for close to 20 years. And McDonald focuses on international news. And it is through McDonald that I've met people like Juan Cole from the University of Michigan. Cole runs a website called Informed Comment. And he comments about the Middle East in particular. But we hear interviews all sorts of topics. And McDonald is very good in terms of not inserting his opinion, but making sure that the guests that he brings have different points of view. So we get informed on that as well. In the afternoon, when we are going home, Carol listens to Joe Walsh on WLS. Joe Walsh is a former congressman. And matter of fact, he was a congressman for two years, and then he lost his seat to Tammy Duckworth, who's now one of our Illinois senators. Walsh is a conservative and a proud conservative and a traditional conservative. And his points of view are very much small government, making a reduction in terms of the laws and regulations that apply to business, and he is very strong on that. While Carol is listening to that, I'm listening to NBR's All Considered, which is the afternoon version of their morning program. Again, they have great interviews, great conversation, and they give a view of the news. Notice, however, that the tagline for both of these NPR programs is, quote, stand with the facts. Keep that in mind, because facts are an awfully difficult thing to be able to actually nail down. For us, facts are formed by comparing points of view and seeing how it fits together and pretty much putting, their, putting facts together based upon that. Often I will teach in the evening. 
and when I am coming home from an evening class, I will turn on Mark Levin. Now, Mark Levin was active in the Reagan administration. He was chief of staff for Edmund Meese, who for a while was attorney general under Reagan, and he is a traditional conservative. He's abrasive, he is confrontational, he is antagonistic, and he's also really smart. And he brings on incredible guests that I don't hear anyone else, anywhere else. I listen to Levin, and I get home, and I give Carol a kiss, and we sit down, and we talk about our day. And part of talking about our day includes talking about what we heard, the news that we heard, and what it means to us, and how we responded to it, because we give each other perspectives. Remember, Carol's leaning to the right, and I'm leaning a bit to the left. So we think that we're pretty well informed, and we think that we pay attention to different viewpoints, and it works extremely well for us. Now you'll notice that in my review of our news consumption for the week, there was a source I did not mention. It's called television. We haven't watched television in our home for nine years. We do have a TV. Uh, we use it for movie rentals so that we can watch movies. Now people will say to me, you're not telling me the truth, right? You must really watch TV. And the answer is we don't except for one day of the year, I must admit. Our neighbors have a really big TV and on Super Bowl Sunday, we go to visit our neighbors. I cook, we go watch, so we actually watch TV. It's the only day of the year that we do. But we don't watch TV news, why? First of all, not everything is a breaking headline. Secondly, we can't stand the commercials that come on to that. Ask your doctor about, we don't wanna ask our doctor about anything. We wanna watch news, and we also don't like to be yelled at. So we do not watch TV news on purpose. We select the news that we watch. We balance it listen to be more correct, we balance it, we read it, and together we form what we think our facts are, which leads me to the base quotation. I collect quotations as a hobby. I use them when I do public speaking, and here's one of my favorites. We find comfort among those who agree with us and growth among those who don't. If all of you agreed with me on something, I would have learned nothing from our conversation. However, if some people disagree with me, I might learn something, I'll give you an example. Earlier this week, I received an email from a person who was in an audience for a lecture I gave last week. The lecture included some references to Enrico Fermi and what he did in terms of developing nuclear chain reactions, atomic power, which led to the atomic bomb in World War II. Fermi was a famous physicist, won the Nobel Prize. And I mentioned as part of that, that at the end of the development of atomic power, we ended up with the atomic bomb, and that helped end the war with Japan. Well, this woman who sent me an email is of Japanese heritage, and she said that she was offended by what I had said during my lecture. And she gave me a totally different perspective on the atomic bomb based on her family's experience. So my first response was sadness, because I don't like to offend or bother anyone. My second one was a little bit of anger as in, oh, come on, I spent hours researching that presentation. But after I got over that, then I sat down and I remembered the quote by Frank Clark, growth among those who don't. So her comments led me to go and do more research and to research what happened from the Japanese perspective. And I actually learned a few things from doing that but I had to be willing to accept that someone with a different point of view could be correct, and it may not necessarily be me. Carol and I do not spend any time in an echo chamber, or what is supposed to be an echo chamber, so we'll go past that. We spend no time in an echo chamber. Echo chambers are dangerous. Spending time in an echo chamber means spending time with people who think like you do, say what you do, like you would, and therefore you get reinforced. Stepping out of your echo chamber, which is after all the title of my presentation, has to do with purposely seeking out sources that disagree with you, because it's from those sources that you learn. Let me share two, couple, two examples. First of all, when I talk about this desire to get out of an echo chamber and talk about news and talk about different points of view, I often will hear from people that say, I can never talk to my spouse about politics. Never. It's immediately an argument. 
I also get a second version of that where I hear, I can't talk about politics at family gatherings because it always becomes an argument. Why does that take place? Well, let's look at it from the perspective of the echo chamber. It takes place because when we are out of our echo chamber, some of us try to compete. Some of us, instead of being willing to listen to what other people are saying, try to convince them, try to show them how smart we are, show them how much we know and why they should agree with us. But political communication is not about that at all. We're only gonna grow if we listen and perhaps learn from what other people say. Otherwise, we're gonna feel good, but we're certainly not going to grow. So I talk to people who are, you know, talk about their spouse or talk about the family, and I will say, when you responded to that family member, did you try to convince them that you were right? Or did you try to listen to them, ask them to explain it further, whatever their point of view was? And the answer invariably is, well, they're obviously wrong, so I tried to convince them how right I was. Well, okay, then you contributed to the argument that was going to take place. If we are gonna discuss politics, if we're gonna consume news, first of all, we need to have a variety of sources, hence my story about what Carol and I do during the week. And then we need to be willing to listen to each other and not compete. Competition's important, but it's important from this point of view. You compete with yourself. The only definition of a wise person is someone who tries to get better and better themselves, not someone who tries to get better than you. That's not competition, that's dominance. You learn from others with different viewpoints, and if you're inside your echo chamber, you will never hear those other voices. I'll have people come up to me and say things like, well, I read the New York Times, isn't that enough? The answer is, no, it's not. The New York Times has a bias also. It's a different bias than the Wall Street Journal. If all you read is that, you will not be informed consumer of news. You simply will not be. You need to seek out those sources that make you uncomfortable. Some of my liberal friends will look at me askance and say, how can you stand to listen to Mark Levin, my evening companion when I'm driving home? I'll say because he's smart and he says things I don't hear anywhere else. That's why it's important that I listen to him. If you don't do that, you're not gonna be a good consumer of news. You're gonna have one point of view. It's probably not going to evolve and you certainly aren't gonna be able to go to that family dinner that you'll be going to and be able to have a good conversation. We learn, which is after all the objective. If we believe in lifelong education, and we certainly do when we talk about continuing education at Harper, lifelong education means learning new things. It means rethinking what you thought you knew before and thinking about it in a new and different way. To do that, you need to have new input. And if all you do is hear the things that you already believe in, you're not gonna grow. You're not gonna get any better. So as I leave the stage, please keep this in mind. What Frank Clark said in terms of the fact that we find comfort from those who agree with us, but we find growth from those who disagree. So go seek some growth and do that in your consumption of news. Thanks. Thank you.